Today we're finally going to discuss the detailed aircraft flight dynamics, starting with the longitudinal flight dynamics. All the pieces are now in place to allow us to do this analysis in detail. So, recall that back in lecture 15, we broke down the linearized equations of motion into three parts. There was the longitudinal, the lateral, and the navigation subsets of the dynamics. While the navigation subset itself didn't affect the dynamics, there, the eight uh, controlling eigenmodes uh, were divided equally between the longitudinal and lateral dynamics. In this lecture, we'll develop the details of the longitudinal dynamics, which corresponds to motion in the XB, ZB plane. So the relevant subset of the dynamics uh, we can write out in full as delta V dot, W dot, delta Q dot, and delta theta dot equals x u x w zero minus g z u z w u naught zero m u m w m q zero 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 one zero times delta u, delta w, delta q, delta theta. For completeness, we also have the control contribution, which is x delta q thrust, 0, 0, 0, z delta flat, 0, 0, 0, m delta elevator, 0, 0, 0. times delta delta t, delta delta f, delta delta e. Now, remember, we're only considering the fixed stick flight so that the control input perturbations are zero. So we can draw the second term. Now these dimensional stability derivatives in this 4x4 four four matrix are given by the following expressions. We start with xu, that's q s over m, the aircraft mass over 1 and 1 over u naught, cxu star, and we'll explain how this is obtained from the cxu uh, value that we got last time um, in a few minutes. ZU is QS over M, 1 over U naught. CZU star XW is QS over M, 1 over U naught. CX alpha ZW is QS over M, 1 over U naught. CZ alpha. XQ is QS over M. C over 2 U naught. This is now for a moment, uh, or sorry, related to an angular velocity. And similarly for ZQ, you have QS over M. C over 2 U naught. C ZQ. For the moment coefficients, or, or the moment uh, stability derivatives, mu is qsc over iy, 1 over u naught, times cmu star, and w is qsc over iy, 1 over u naught, times cm alpha, and mq is qs C over IY, C over 2, U naught, C, M, Q. 
Now, since we assume our aircraft has left-right symmetry, then I X Y equals I Y Z equals zero. Um, so for simplicity, we just say that I Y is what we would normally call I Y Y, because there's only one Y component of the inertia tensor that comes into play. So note that all these derivatives have been redefined with factors uh, 1 over m compared to the uh, original way that we set this up. So this means our previous definitions of delta x now actually become delta x over m and similarly for everything else. So previous delta x is now really delta x over m um, and same for all the other quantities. This is just a convenience to prevent us from having to write factors of mass all over the place inside this matrix. So we have now a 4 by 4 system. So we expect we'll have four eigenvalues, and we can group them as follows. Sigma pH plus minus omega pH is what we call the fugoid mode. So this is typically slow and weakly damped, as we'll see. And sigma sp plus or minus omega sp is the short period mode. Which is fast and well damped. So if we draw a complex plane, there's sigma the real axis and omega the imaginary axis, then we'll have a pair of modes around here and another pair of modes perhaps out here where these ones represent the short period and these ones represent the fugoid. So this represent this is just a sort of illustrative representative plot. Um, but it shows that the two modes typically have good spectral separation. So the frequencies are reasonably far apart. The result of this is that we can estimate the eigenvalues by considering each pair in isolation. So now we have two two by two systems instead of the four by four system. And we can analyze these two by two problems uh, by hand. So however, it's important to note what we're doing when we when we take this two two uh, parallel two by two system approach is that we're now neglecting interactions between these two types of motion. And so the analysis which follows is approximate, but still gives useful results for most cases.